Hello, guys. This is uh, Dr. Anatol, and we have Mike behind the camera, and we're still doing this uh, Zoom call. Well, uh, today's topic, which may require more than one video, but uh, is really a continuation of a prior video where uh, you mentioned that common sense is one, not necessarily so common, but two, is a thing that perhaps one of your triggers as a teacher. Um, so there's a difference between common sense and logic. And so that's where I was going to start us today. Well, let's start from one thing. I've been checking out different um, professors of psychology and, uh, and also some spiritual teachers and um, apparently, people who have well-developed developed conceptual thinking, uh, let's call it abstract thinking, there are very, very few. Um, only like 3% of the population are, are capable of uh, computer programming and uh, mathematics. Um, th this goes back to that um, only like 5% um, or so of the population are uh, really capable of um, using logic, conce conceptual logic, not uh, essentially making stupid pronouncements based uh, on uh, nearly nothing. And the way people compensate for this lack of logic is by um, making these pronouncements and uh, using common sense and these commonsensical things uh, travel um, in, uh, in cultures. And uh, so there's lots of uh, beliefs that seem to be based on something real, when actually they are just beliefs. So that's one thing that I want to mention. Uh, so we can say that um, so-called common sense, most of the time is just the way how people um, cover up their ineptitude. Uh, this is not a um, being judgmental. Uh, it's just uh, unfortunate the reality that can be uh, rather easily figured out by people, um, by scientists by um, so-called spiritual teachers, uh, if they have this ability to, um, to distinguish between um, something that makes sense and something that doesn't make sense. And uh, common sense is between these two. But um, for me, I would probably introduce one really important um, notion that I have uh, learned from my dear dead friend, uh, Carlos Castaneda, who I like, um, well, like is a bad word. Um, I think that he made a, a monumental contribution to what spirituality is and what spiritual path is. And, um, and I'll try to unpack this. I'm not a scholar of Castaneda, so please uh, excuse me rambling on. And you, Mike, please um, interrupt me anytime you want, but within reason. So <clears throat> the book that I highly recommend of Castaneda is um, The Power of Silence. And... Um, the idea behind this book, and you need to read the whole thing to, and read it maybe like 10 times to realize the depth at which it's been written, and probably read his books before that book and after that book to appreciate its contribution. But getting to the point is that uh, uh, there are four positions well, he uses assemblage point. Um, an assemblage point is how we construct reality around us. 
So the reason why you see reality the way it, you see it is because you're human, because your parents trained you in certain ways and the society trained you in certain ways. The reality actually doesn't look the way you see it. Uh, that has to do with how uh, our minds uh, operate. So we have assumed um, a human form and all human societies because we have the same biology function kind of the same way. Uh, and now is the point. Um, somewhere in the ancient past, uh, we used to intuit things. We just knew instinctively. That was before language became really, really important. And as the language started to develop, as our uh, sense of self started to develop, we started thinking in concepts, in words, in images that were produced by the culture and by the language. And as a result, um, we lost that direct knowing. Uh, if before, you know, you could just directly know anything you want, and that has to do if we invoke Christianity slash uh, Judaism slash um, Hinduism, etc. Uh, basically, we're all sparks of God, and God manifests everything as this universe, and therefore God, because it's in his mind or her mind, uh, knows everything because there is nothing else to know besides himself, herself, or itself, depending how you want to call God. And we are part of that, therefore, in deep meditation. Um, nowadays, we can directly see truth, directly see um, knowledge. But in the past, um, no one knows exactly how long, probably in the vicinity of 5,000 years ago, uh, people could, um, they didn't have to tune into uh, this silent knowledge, they were in silent knowledge. Instead, they had to tune their minds to logic and reasoning. And I'm just guessing I will make a pronouncement which is probably completely wrong, is that somewhere in ancient Greece, when we had the Socrates and those people, that's when the shift started happening. That's why before they were talking about gods and goddesses and all this, uh, you know, those who were living on Olympus or in, uh, in uh, I've forgotten the name for Hindu heaven, but it's basically was more or less the same thing. Lots of uh, gods, <clears throat> they were basically representing the shift from uh, silent knowledge to uh, um, to this more logical knowledge. So um, the opposite of uh, silent knowledge is, um, I don't remember that term, maybe it will come back to my aging mind. What's, what's happening is that um, nowadays, the pinnacle of understanding that humans can have is the end of logic. Um, that would be like a point of extreme intellectuality, extreme um, logic. And very, very few people are capable of being 100% not swayed by their emotions or by their culture or by uh, their, um, basically by their conceptual mind. And, and that is called... Uh, um, is in many ways it's called Buddhahood. Um, and uh, what's interesting is that when you reach that extreme point, which now is very much valued, we value nowadays um, people who are really, really smart, not in a stupid way smart, but I mean people who really understand the difference uh, between uh, what is real and what is just nonsense. And here's my big point, is that in the past, people, most people never would, uh, would never reach the point of silent knowledge. They would approach it. And that approach is called superstition. On, on the way there, most people, uh, they do not get entirely in the silo knowledge. They just become superstitious. And we see this in religion nowadays as well. It's like people feel something, they feel there's, they're approaching God. 
but they are nearly in, in, incapable of separating that approach towards God from their devotion to the ideology of that religion or to um, all kind of ritualistic uh, and pointless ritualistic uh, nonsense that uh, is, um, well, I shouldn't call it nonsense, that is around that. So in their search for silent knowledge, most people just get saddled with superstition and most religions are basically some form or another of that. The same way in the modern times, most people when they try to um, approach that point of uh, extreme uh, intellectuality, I'm still not remembering the term, um, they never reach it. They do approach it through the points that we would call common sense. So there is some logic to it, but they never get to it. Um, so that's really what common sense is. Common sense is uh, to uh, smartness is the same thing as superstition is to spirituality. And that's how I see it. It's like anytime someone says common sense, I just say, yeah, right. That's the best you, that you can do. Um, and that's all right. Uh, talking about this, they may sound, this, all, this whole thing can sound really judgmental. And the reality is that, uh, um, you know, we are as human beings, we are where we are. So uh, in many, many ways, smartness can be tested. Uh, smartness is, uh, uh, you know, uh, an objective type of thing. And I know that I'm not defining it well. But um, you just need to do the best you can. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being not as smart as someone else. It doesn't de devalue you as a human being in any way. It just makes you less fit for certain purposes and more fit for other purposes. And uh, anybody who thinks that I'm being judgmental here needs to relax and get alive. Um, I'll let you respond to what I just said. Well, I was going to ask if uh, conspiracy theories fall under the same banner as superstitions. Um, this is like a perfect. You couldn't ask a better question. That's why I keep you. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, so the tangential thing to this is not necessarily conspiracy theory, it's just a symptom of something, is that um, one thing that is happening right now world over is that uh, common sense in, uh, in the guise uh, of uh, that, you know, logic and reasoning um, is um, overtaking, um, well, it's overtaking uh, certain religious spiritual nature of certain societies who wants me now and um, so what happens is that um, a lot of people who are uh, trying to be uh, lovers of god trying to be uh, connected with god trying to be de uh, devoted they can sense that in our intellectual times we're losing the whole point of life, which is enjoying a deeper and deeper connection with the universe. That's what gives us, ultimately gives us satisfaction. And the problem with intellectual knowledge is that it's very cold. And they feel that this coldness is, ar is arriving. Um, I mean, a, a lot of that has to do with how our societies are structured uh, through intellectual uh, legal frameworks. And they're trying to resist that. And, but the problem is to resist that, uh, they need to say something straight, what I'm gonna do right now. And that is that uh, intellect and logic is wonderful, but it is extremely limited by its own nature. And, uh, but uh, the universe is not limited by that. And greater things come from, uh, from God, from silent knowledge, not from the intellect. And uh, if you uh, get become too logical, too much focused on 
the intellect, which is basically what's happening right now. Our new religion essentially is, is science, which is not really science. It's more like pseudoscience because no one is really understanding what science is, including the scientists themselves. So that gives rise to, um, to all kinds of uh, conservative movements. They sense that we're losing something. They don't really know what it is. They don't have enough, uh, uh, you know, enough ability to really sense that. I, I, won't, I don't want to say they don't have enough brain, um, but that's part of it. Uh, so they invent all kinds of conspiracy theories. So actually, they are right. There is a deep state. They are right. There is a conspiracy, but it's not that conspiracy. It's a conspiracy of people uh, becoming really, really attached to thought forms, really, really attached to intellectual uh, knowledge and not even succeeding at that because first of all, most people cannot succeed at that. And another thing is that a lot of that knowledge is impure and also it has that you know, fatal flaw. It's the same thing like silent knowledge also has a fatal flaw. It's, you know, makes you really passive because you don't really need to think. You just, you know, actions come through you. It's like instinctual, it's kind of like being a cat. And that's why, you know, having a cat or a dog nowadays is a, such a big deal because they really are, you know, little Buddhas in a, a, animal bodies. You know, they really supply to us this sort of, this joy of silent knowledge. Um, and, um, you know, so, so, so that's the nature of these conspiracy theories. But, uh, you know, <laughs> these conspiracy theories, they, well, first of all, they're not theories, they're just bullshit. Uh, they arrive um, because people do not know how to deal with a reality that they see, but they don't really understand. And also the reality that is way too complex for an individual being to, individual, you know, human being to, to deal with. Um, so we need to be kind to these people, uh, which does not mean that they're not engaging in bullshit. Well, let me let me interject there, um, because something you said kind of got me on this path of thinking, which is uh, there's too much information available now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and too much <laughs> access to it. And so, in the great grand irony that I'm sure we're not the first and not the last to discuss, because so much is available and it's at your fingertips and you don't have to think anymore, most people don't think anymore and they don't actually know nearly as much as they used to have to know. I, I think you're right on. Uh, this is like a really, a, definitely a, really a, a big deal, but I was referring to slightly different thing or maybe a completely different thing. The thing is the information that we have, uh, whether you understand it or not, is a separate issue, but the information that we have follows very particular laws. And these laws are dictated by the thought forms to which we are attached. And therefore it appears to us uh, that some things are knowledge and some things are not. So remember yesterday we were discussing astrology. It's a very good example of that. To the modern thought form that is use, uses you know, science as a common sense, device, which means they don't understand either common sense or science, most of the people, to them, astrology looks like superstition, and it also looks like uh, something they need to react against. So like if you go to the college here and you talk to any of the professors, they'll freak if you talk about astrology, because without knowing what it is, they assume it's a superstition means that they are superstitious about, uh, you know, astrology, which is, you know, in their eyes is a superstition. And I'm not saying that astrology is right or wrong. This is besides the point. What I'm just saying is that our human society is evolving along certain pretty well uh, established thought form paths. And these paths are models of reality. They're not reality. And, uh, this is what defines for us how to behave, what to do, how to think. On top of that, we uh, well, and this is how information is structured. On top of that, 
um, our education system, uh, for a variety of reasons, has failed to make most people think well. And uh, I said this many, many times that you know, while I was teaching in college, I noticed that people who were born before 85, 86 were uh, much better, much more, much better thinkers. And after that, they were not. I do not know why. Maybe there was some kind of educational reform so that they, uh, you know, they, they got um, uh, educated poorly or maybe there was some kind of astrology, uh, whatever it is, it was market, it was obvious. And uh, not everybody was of course like that, but majority enough that I, I've noticed that. And one of the reasons why I quit uh, teaching college is that uh, you know, I, to me it was like mostly a, um, an exercise in futility. And, um, and it wasn't just my opinion, and lots of people uh, you know, shared with me the same thing. Lucky for me, I had an opportunity to do what I always wanted to do, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, so, so going back to, so basically, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, so, so what we see right now with thought forum, uh, thought forums um, is that a certain kind of thought forum, they, this is the one which, dominates our intellectual knowledge, uh, dominates uh, science, scientific pursuits, um, makes us think in a common sense way without really knowing how to go further, that thought form is dying. At least it's, it's right now very seriously damaged. And that's why we get all kind of superstition, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, new religions emerging because people are now switching their attention towards the path towards silent knowledge. Uh, how long will it take to switch? I don't know. Some astrologers say 500 years, um, but it is happening. Um, people sensing that, you know, they need to have a different kind of morality, which is in their minds connected with religion. They sense that they need to have a different kind of government, which in, in their minds is connected to this uh, dark state, which is basically just uh, people following the same, you know, dying thought form, etc. So these people are not wrong; they're just uh, superstitious, just like you know, people who are into logic and reasoning are not wrong using common sense. It's just deficient. One thing that I want to add to the, the, the thing about uh, common sense, uh, the talk about common sense is that uh, when you um, become, get to the point of this extreme intellectuality, that point projects itself onto the point of silent knowledge so that people who are super smart and super logical tend to have also very, very good intuition. And people who are really tuned into silent knowledge also tend to be really, really smart and logical. And I'm just guessing that uh, superstition projects itself onto common sense and common sense projects itself um, to uh, superstition. So, so these things, they go back and forth. Um, so, so basically, if you meet a true spiritual teacher, they will also be super sharp in terms of their intellect. And if you meet some amazing scientist who is super sharp mentally, you will also find that they have tremendous access to intuition and silent knowledge. Th that is something that um, started happening to me um, when I got myself into, into the PhD process. I very much noticed how clean my thinking and my intuition became towards the end. I got surprised by it. Before it was just something that I read about.